go around and share the word. Church, God is alive and we are alive. Amen. Thank you so much. I treasure that. The Lord bless us. Okay, today we're going to uh, study in continuation of our subject matter last time before I flew to Manila. And it's getting better and better because you can see in conjunction or in relation to the topic last Sunday by the Jewish guy, we'll be touching again this, uh, uh, this topic which is not very uh, kind of uh, popular. So church, I want uh, you uh, get your, I get your attention please because as you will study the Word of God, this is not so popular in the context of the changing world, especially holiness and sin. But for us, we are going to unveil these things so we as believers in the Lord will not fall into that predicament of double standard life sometimes for the Lord, sometimes for the world, and sometimes for sin. So we are now in the progressive sanctification, which means that you are growing not only in knowledge, but you are growing in character, in attitude, and also in our relationship one to another. So all the characteristics of this world or evil world system, as we study this, uh, the Word of God today, will be slowly being cut off and you are now going to a higher ground of understanding what Christianity and what following Christ is all about, that there must be holiness in our daily walk with God. So follow me, Romans 6, 1 to 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on saying so that grace may increase? By no means, by no means, we are those who have died to sin. I want you to take notice of the word died to sin. That's a very powerful message of Paul for us to understand as we receive justification as if we have not committed sin. We are children of God. Paul is going deeper into a life of a Christian brothers and sisters to die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized, in other words, key word, baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death, baptized in Christ, baptized into his death. What shall we say? We, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, Here's the implication, the substance in conjunction to the, what Jesus did, we too may live a new life. Underline that new life in your Bible, new life, verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self, this old self, old nature, which originated from Adam, the old characteristic, which is defined, ugly, filthy, stinky, our old self was crucified with him, so that the body, rolled by sin, might be done away, is finished with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Verse 7, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastered over Him. The death He died, He died to sin once for all, but the life He lives, He lives to God. Now, application, verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much as we are unveiling the wonderful theological items that Paul is bringing us into deep, deeper experience of sanctification, of being a believer. I pray that you will bless our hearts together, bless our spiritual ears to understand more and more of what you're saying today. Father, we honor you. 
And we commit everything to you. Help me to be able to expound the word according to what you have designed for us, for me, for all of us to perceive and then to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to entitle this ex exposition today, Freedom from Sin's Control. Freedom from Sin's Control or from Sin's Captivity. There is an old story, I read it many times in America, of a brother and a sister, they are both teenager, teenagers, and a story about one day the boy is a little bit <coughs> very playful, the younger brother, and most of the time he just pick up some stones and rock and throw those uh, stones to their, you know, to the roster, to, you know, to the animal. And accidentally, as he was doing that very often, that was his, his kind of playing around because they're living in a country, you know, if you're living in a country with roosters and ducks and goose and everything and, and pigs and, and I did it when I was young, bad. I don't want, you know, I have yung tirador and then I hit the head of the, the, uh, the, the, the roaster, nabulag tuloy. Sabi ko, oh, I hate that. And then when I was growing up, you have some kind of naughty action. Now it so happened, those little rat hit the head of the goose and the goose for a few moments died. And later on, the father and the mother, as the father was busy going back to the office in, in the little town as they were living in a country, the mother said to the older daughter, uh, daughter, you have to clean the house, clean the dishes, take care, clean the pots and the pans and everything. And then your younger brother has to do something and he has to throw the garbage in a garbage can. Here comes the mother left for doing something in the field, and here comes the, the chores of this brother and sister. And the sister said to the younger brother, Hey, brother, John, yes, Jane, uh, I want you to do the, the cleaning of the dishes and the pots and pans and everything. After you finish, throw in the garbage. Why? Isn't it our mother give us our chores, and why should I do the other one that is your chores? Oh, hey. Remember the goose? And because of that, he was stunned. Okay. He would be in trouble. So, okay, I'll take her the washing of the dishes, the washing the pants. The following day, the following weeks, here comes again, and the mother said, okay, take her now to the backyard. Since you are a growing uh, lady now, take her to the backyard, sweep the backyard, pick up all this kind of twigs and, and little branches and then the, uh, you know, the leaves. And then I will tell your younger brother to do something else. Pitch some water and do these things. The mother left again for the chores in the open field as they own the, that field. And here comes Jane. John, yes, I want you to take care of the twigs and all the, all the, uh, the leaves and the petals and everything around the house. And after that, you can do your chores, pitch the water, and do something. Why should I? How about the goose? He has no option but to obey because he was controlled. The third thing happened. The father and mother were going to the town, and one of you has to stay home and want to buy some groceries and enjoy for the weekend. And Brother John was so happy, it might be his chance to see the city, and Jane was so excited, but there was only one who must join the father and mother in the city. And John thought, this is my chance, and here comes Jane. John, stay home. Why? Remember the goose? He stayed home. Weeks passed until one day, John came and talked to his mother, and said, Mom, I did a bad thing. Mom, I did something that is not acceptable to you. What is that, my son? I strike, I hit the goose with a, one of the stones and hit the goose on the head and the goose died. Mom, I'm very sorry. Forgive me for what I have done. The mother said, John, I knew what had happened. I have forgiven you. 
But the mere fact that you confess to me what you have done, I want you to know, you are released, you are forgiven. The following week, the chores come back again. And then the mother told Jane to do the thing, and then John to do the thing. Here comes Jane, come back to John. John, do what i supposed to do. How about the goods? And John said, sister, I opened up everything to my mom, to our mom, and it was communicated to our dad, and they forgive me. Today, I am free indeed. I'm no longer under the captivity of what I have done. I am free indeed. This afternoon, the topic that we will be expounding has something to do with our old nature. We were bound by sin for many years, and we become believers in the Lord. Now, entering the study of Romans chapter 6, I want you to see in your Bible, your, your Bible with you, there is a change of tone of the voice of the Apostle Paul in even the, uh, the change of feeling. It is more remarkable than in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to verse 26. I, I would like to read to you so you can see the comparison. And we are now in the music, we have now what we call the crescendo movement. It's getting better. So from C to F, and you know, and so I would like to read to you Romans chapter 3 so you can see the comparison and Paul now unveiling to us a teaching deeper from the first experience that you have had in chapter 3. Here's the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 3, beginning from verse 21. Then we'll continue. So be patient and follow me in this wonderful teaching of Paul. Here's the word of God from 321. It says, but now God has shown us a different way of being right in His sight. Not by obeying the law, the Ten Commandments, I want you to hear quick to the point, even when you are growing up, you can never ever, if you don't have personal relationship with God and the Holy Spirit is not inside of my heart, regardless of my human effort and strength, I would always fail because a spiritual law, Ten Commandments, is a spiritual, and we are born in a carnal lifestyle from Adam, Adamic descendants. We can never go higher, we're always falter and fall. And so we can see here, not by obeying the law, because we can never ever obey the law. There's only one person who become human, just like you and I, born in a manger, who fulfill the demands of the law. Absolutely, 100% high five in His name is Jesus Christ. So, because of that, we were not accepted or become right to God because of the Ten Commandments, which was promised long time ago by the Scriptures, were made right, listen to this, we become acceptable and become believers in the Lord when you simply trust Jesus Christ, Jesus, I trust in you from my heart, confession of my mouth, you are my God. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me, and you are my Lord and my Savior. That moment in time when you trust the saving grace and the blood that was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago, that moment in time, all our sins, when you come to the knowledge of Christ at the very young age of five, you know, these little ones, I was so happy. The youngest uh, girl there, uh, you know, and boy praying with me, two, three sentences. What happened to that is that our sins has been erased and we are saved because of the blood of Jesus. And we all can be saved in the same way, no matter who we are and what we have done. Follow me. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But here is verse 24, yet now in the present tense, your present positional stand today, but now at the present time, in His gracious kindness, declares us, all of us, the Bible says, not guilty. When you accept Jesus Christ, maybe 5, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe when you come to know Him, 
The moment and time you say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior, your sins has been erased completely. When God looks at you, it's no longer sin. Jesus, who is the righteousness of God, live inside of you, and you are not condemned or guilty, as if you have not committed sin, what the Father could see in you is Jesus Christ in your heart. He has done this through Jesus who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take our punishment for our sins and so to satisfy God's anger against us. We are made right with God when we believe, remember, there is no effort. God, thank you for the preaching of the word. I believe. When you receive the message, and then your will said, I need Jesus. And then your mouth said, Jesus, forgive me, you are my Lord. That moment and time when you believe to the shed blood of Jesus, what happened, we are entirely, what before the Lord, become accepted in the beloved. And so, and he is entirely fair, not just in this present time when he declares sinners to be right in his sight because they believe in Jesus. Now I want you to see, follow me. When you believe in Jesus Christ, that moment in time, there is a down payment. Jesus, I am a sinner, forgive me. The Holy Spirit will come into your heart. When you say, Father, I accept you to your son Jesus Christ, the Trinity, don't divide them. Once you accept Jesus, the Trinity lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So that moment in time, without your effort, because grace is unmerited favor given to you without any of your part or your distance to believe, that moment in time, you become children of God. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of you is a mark. It is a guarantee that when Jesus will come for the second time to judge the world or in that rapture, in a split of second, you will be snatched away from earth and your body will be transferred into an incorruptible body. You will see Jesus Christ face to face because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So the guarantee that you are certain about salvation is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. Amen? So we are all Enough. Partakers of that. Now let's join out to, to what Paul is saying. Two things happen in chapter 3. The anger of God against all sin. He was so angry. Jesus become the one who carry all the penalty of the anger of God in his body. Because he was the Savior. Number two, God has delivered us from anger because of his son then restored us to, listen to the word, favor. Used to be your enemy of God. I was an enemy of God. I was a naughty boy. There is no way that God would listen to me. No good works. I was so religious and I was so faithful and sincere, but it was sincerely wrong because my life is different to the way I confess I love God. Number three, for today, will reveal to you and to us, the deliverance no longer we are the object of God's favor. Today, God has given us the power to be delivered from sin into in a newness of life. I, I want you to notice the movement of Paul's exposition. Of your growth and my growth, my understanding, and the way we must live. First, what we receive through Christ justification as if we have not committed sin without any human effort number two justification you are pardoned you are forgiven and you are righteous declarative statement because i can see jesus in you number two today we are in christ that's another theme here is the order of importance number one we are reconciled back to god reconciliation the other, this is now the theme of Paul, is not only we are reconciled back to God, and God is now having a relationship with you. Going deeper, God rescue you and me 
from the power of sin. Because when we were growing up, David said, I was conceived in iniquity. So when you're growing up, whether you like it or not, we are permeated, stained from the womb of our parents, the sin. That's why our characteristics and attitude are all defined. That's why Jesus said, there's no righteous, no not even one. Our characteristic, though we have some good things inside of us, most of that is jockey and junkie. And thank God, because God is giving us today some kind of a new life where we can be we can be changed so he rescued us from the power of sin I want you to open with me now in the book of Galatians turn with me and to the point because we have to unveil these things now today church today holy living in sin is not popular teaching in the in the many churches we love them they hate that but we cannot get away with this because we cannot be righteous before god unless these things has to be divorced bad things bad character has to be cut off or we have love sin and god it cannot be okay follow me in the book of galatians chapter 5 19 to 21 follow me open your bible please 19 to 21, here are the words of the Lord. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, this is our old life, your lives will produce these evil results. Sexual immorality, impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, participation in demonic activities, hostility, quarreling, Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, divisions, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other kinds of sin. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you can see here, Paul itemized, enumerated, our old sweetheart when we were not yet converted that was our life before sexual immorality becoming acceptable norm in this day and age you know sad but true and as you observe the philippines where we love the the you know the wonderful image of maria clara there is very, very seldom to find Maria Clara in the Philippines today. Because at the age of 14, 15, 16, I can see with my naked eyes as I live in a few weeks and, and as I visit the Philippines, they are not living in outside of the benefits of marriage. You know, sexual immorality or adultery is a relationship of a, heart of a married person to another person. I said this, the word is changing, but the word of God remain true. And that's the reason why we cannot connive, we cannot condone. In other words, though they're doing that, I can always, I cannot enjoy what they're talking about. That's not my topic. Sexual immorality it cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Pardonable, but why you must quit and live according to the standard of the Lord. Number two is impure and dirty thoughts. Imagination, fantasy, and yeah, these are our old nature before. Impure thoughts, lustful imagination. Now, dirty thoughts. Now, eagerness for lustful pleasure. I want you to hear that sexual or sex is given by God to a couple, husband and wife, as a gift. It is the most wonderful intimacy recorded as far as relationship is concerned. It is a gift originated from the hearts of the Trinity. It was given for us to complement each other, to appreciate one another, and the two will become one flesh. But eagerness for lust for pleasure is not. Now this monster called lust is fair. Now 
all the movie and all the you know and the television today there is a spell when you watch it you become desynthesized used to be ouch i don't want to hear that oh no no turn it off today even it is explicit and dirty in Christ's name is being made. Oh, Jesus Christ, in all this movie, we get used to it. It seems our hearing is already deaf because we get used to it. So here we can see eagerness for that's for pleasure. A spell was the way of Romans in Greek culture, and they embraced that. Now, the God of this kind of sexual fantasy and pleasure is called Bacchus in Rome, and it is called Dionysus in Greek. And it's the Greek god of wine. So, you know, oh, pastor, it's a simple thing. No, it is between you and God. Listen to me. And this is, I think, beautiful learning. If you are, I am not saying it's bad or wrong that the Bible speak to you. If you know that when the early days you were once a drunkard, you love, love drinking wine. And you got converted. And I'm not saying yes, wrong or what. The Lord will just speak into his word. And then when you become a believer, as uh, Ron Baker was talking, when God delivered me, because I was a drunkard and very responsible in his testimony,